It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therata and Mary Jo Foley are here. The Microsoft earnings are in. They'll have their analysis. Google gives thumbs up to Microsoft's Chromium-based Edge. And Windows 10 crapware. It's still a thing, unfortunately. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly, episode 619, recorded Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. One trillion dollars. Windows Weekly is brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash Windows. And by Pulseway, the ridiculously cool IT management software that lets you remotely monitor and control IT systems from any device. It's letting busy admins find issues on the go and be more productive, and you can try it free for 14 days at Pulseway.com slash twit. And by Grammarly. Grammarly is a communication tool that helps people improve their writing to be mistake-free, clear, and effective. Start writing confidently by going to Grammarly.com slash Windows and get 20% off a Grammarly premium account today. It's May Day. Happy May, everyone. It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat is here with his May crew cut. No, it's my build crew cut. You can't see it, but if I turn around, there's a Windows logo etched oh, in the back of my Lord, head. Oh, nice. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mary Jo Foley, uh, they are also with a crew cut. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you've always had uh, the the bob. But, I've also got the little Azure logo. Oh, right nice. Here, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, there's no. I think you should have a Hadoop elephant tattoo. That would. I be think good. I mm -hmm. should. Yeah. Each yeah. week we gather together here <laughs> to celebrate Microsoft earnings. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Uh, it's a special time of the quarter. <laughs> You know, Apple came in yesterday and said, well, iPhone sales are down 17%, but we made money in services. Uh, I don't think there's any any dark cloud. Well, maybe there is. You tell me. <laughs> over, over Microsoft. Microsoft's earnings, yeah. Oh, no. 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 Pretty good. Microsoft pretty is a solid <laughs> and diverse company. You know, yep. it, it just, again, and by the way, their stock price uh, went up and they made a trillion Yep. <laughs> yep. Market cap. Yep. yep. Third company to be worth yep. a trillion market cap. Or uh, number three. It always takes Microsoft three tries. That makes hey, sense. It does. Pretty good company. <laughs> Apple and Amazon. They're not trillionaires either at this point. Yeah. Right. right. Still, uh, I think the market, you know, for so long, Microsoft stock was just stagnant. I mean, oh, for man. A, it was crazy. a decade or more. <laughs> and now it's just, uh, it's a, it's a fair haired, fair head. <laughs> yes, Leo. <laughs> friend of, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Are, that? You, are you using a hookah now? Is that uh, a okay. a hookah? This is no. This is my former <laughs> is it a hookah. Big gulp mug or whatever. Oh, okay. this is. it's a little See, bubble tea. Was, I, we talked about this before. I can, now I already forgot the name of it. Some Dunkin' Donuts cup from the eighties. So uh, let's start with uh, cloud revenues because that was the that was the big the big number, right? That's always their new number, the number they hold up um, as the way you should think about them and look at them. Commercial cloud, that fake category they made up, which is Office 365, Azure, Dynamics 365, um, EMS, like uh, anything that is a cloud only thing, plus some LinkedIn revenue. It's just like kind of this amorphous category. They is there any Newt or um, Eye of Newt or yeah, <laughs> Widow's there may be some Warts or whatever? Yeah, there Yeah. <laughs> There's Boil a lot it of things and they stir cauldron. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bubble, sure. it, bubble it up. And this mm -hmm. quarter, which was their Q3 for fiscal Spice 19, 9.6 billion of <clears throat> those things combined. That's amazing. So their whole Still not a business, the, by the way. Still not a. No, it's not. What their whole mean? revenue pie for, the, for, this, for this quarter was 30 billion. And so about 10 billion of that was commercial cloud. But again, like Paul said, it's not one of their three main businesses in terms of how they break out their financials. It's not even it's a business within another things. business. It's a no, it's, it's a pretend <laughs> metric. It is. Yep. But Wall Street loves that pretend metric. And they yep. kind of live and die by that pretend metric. We don't even know how much of that is Azure, by the way. Um, 
that right. they don't break out Azure revenues. It, w many people believe because they don't want to be compared to AWS because that would be pretty much mm -hmm. a direct comparison. And AWS uh, is car, the king of the hill. I mean, much, much hard better. To I would yes. say that AWS is the Sony PlayStation 4 to Azure's <laughs> Xbox One. Is it? Is it... Uh, I think it's worse than that, actually. But okay, <laughs> if that's where well, you, I don't know. you think it's worse than two to one, yeah, it isn't it? I don't know. I don't well, know. I don't know. It's it is hard to know too because now so. Amazon's going to be in the hybrid cloud thing too, and are they going to start combining their hybrid cloud revenues and with AWS? I would assume yes, and they yeah, should, so. but I don't see any. They're not going to get a big uptick there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. But they are trying to go after more enterprises. Yeah. But anyway, back yeah. back to Microsoft. Um, they had a great quarter, um, and a big part of the reason they had a, an unusually good quarter was Windows, which they actually did say during their call, which was surprising because, you know, Microsoft doesn't like to talk about Windows anymore. They talk about Microsoft <laughs> 365, but not Windows. The chip shortage is finally over? Was that part of it? Yeah. So they actually <laughs> said that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> they did. We talked about oh, that with geez. the last quarter, right? They they said the reason Windows was off last quarter was because of Intel's chip shortage. And mm -hmm. this month, I mean, this quarter, they said, you know what? We thought that chip shortage was going to continue until June, but it actually ended earlier. But then Intel called month. us and said, we're not pretending that anymore, so you can <laughs> stop using that. <laughs> so uh, they say because the chip shortage was over, Windows OEM Pro growth, growth was up 15% for the quarter. Hmm. Okay, but the chip I'm shortage was in low-end chips. <laughs> I don't. Know. And then All they right. said uh, the low-end device also was up the non-pro. Um, but yeah, I'm just telling you. I what don't know. They said. <laughs> I don't, I'm not buying it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, window. Whatever reason, Windows was up. But the reason, by the way, was not migrations from Windows Seven, which I did ask right. them. I said, "Oh, so is the real reason that Windows was so?" high this quarter because everybody's getting off Windows 7 and going to 10? No. Nope. Right, right. Not it's healthy. Yet. They said <laughs> uh, Windows 10 deployments across new and upgraded PCs remains healthy. Right. I assume healthy is, in this case is uh, anything that is a positive number. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we don't really know what happened there, but Windows had an unusually good quarter. Surface had a really solid quarter in terms of revenues. We don't really know how much money Surface makes or loses because they don't disclose that. Um, uh, yeah. Revenue is one point three billion. I mean, it's um, yeah, obviously down from the holiday quarter, but it would be right. right. First quarter of the calendar yeah. year is not going to equate yeah. to the holiday quarter. But no. you know, we're we're always looking for that one billion figure on Surface, and we got that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good. Yep, that was good. Um, they had a really good quarter, again, Office 365 commercial. They're up to 180 million users for that. So that's not the home and personal. That's just the business group there for 180 million. They hadn't given yeah. out that number in a while. They've been giving us yeah, a I was curious about that. 34.2 on consumer. <laughs> yeah, you know what I think happened was last quarter when they did that, everybody was kind of making their own estimates as to what that number was. And I think they were like, okay, let's let's get everybody on the it's same <laughs> Did you? Use, uh, I think the biggest number we got from Office was actually for the Outlook mobile app. Yeah. Which they say now amazing. has 100 million users. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, that's. Yep. iOS and Android combined. That's big. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yep. So, I mean, it was like they were fi firing on all cylinders, um, except Paul's going to throw in one bucket of cold water here, I believe, on the next minute. But <laughs> the, uh, the Xbox is a business. You? Uh, yeah, I, I love Xbox. You know this. Um, I got a number of complaints last week because we didn't have any Xbox stories. So, spoiler alert. I got, we I got lots of non-complaints about that, but yeah. Yeah, but this isn't about you, Mary Jo. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul. No, the, uh, <laughs> um, however, Xbox as a business today is not much of a business. And uh, yeah, I, I've talked in the past how uh, they had an up quarter. I think it was the previous quarter, like literally only because of Fortnite. And uh, this quarter was down across the board. Um, they're not selling as many consoles. Um, the software is not selling uh, as well. They, they again, they don't actually say Fortnite, but they they literally said the benefit from this one game title was not as great as we thought it was going to be. <laughs> like the <laughs> Fortnite thing has kind of died down a little bit. Um, you know, so obviously Microsoft is transitioning Xbox, the business, to the cloud, 
And that's not something that happens overnight, but we'll see the first uh, xCloud stuff. In fact, we've got some xCloud stuff later in the show, but, um, you know, they'll be testing that later this year. And, uh, you know, I think I think Microsoft can turn gaming into a solid business uh, once they do move it to the cloud. But, man, we're just uh, treading water here, waiting for the helicopter to arrive at this point. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Any other things from the earnings? Oh, this was kind of an interesting statistic, although another one where we don't really have a baseline to compare it to. Mm -hmm. um, where was this? It was Dynamics. Let's see. So Dynamics is Microsoft's ERP and CRM products, both software and services. And for the first time, I can't find it in my note now. <laughs> for the first time, Dynamics was what? <laughs> I know. I had Those it on the tip of my non ironically. <laughs> no, not a, non ironically. Complete this sentence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dynamics 365 is. Is something, something, something. Um, for the first time, more than 50% of Dynamics re revenues came from the cloud. That's actually big because, you know, Microsoft's really putting a big push on the Power Platform stuff and they're really going after Salesforce with Dynamics. Um, they're, again, kind of like, Amazon being the big gun, Salesforce is a big gun in the CRM space. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that to actually be true, finally, 50% is coming from online. That's big for them. Hmm. All going into but the commercial cloud bucket. Two, that two other uh, notes from the earnings that I think are interesting, one of which is <laughs> non-humorous. Um, <laughs> you know, well, Microsoft 365 is a thing, right? It's obviously a business. And it's comprised of other things which are in different parts of Microsoft's businesses. And they, they usually don't, they talk a lot about Microsoft 365, but they don't really ever give a lot of numbers around Microsoft 365. I don't believe they've ever talked about subscriber numbers, for example, even though they give them for Office 365. No, I don't think they, they have. They never give, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think so. And they don't really give any indication that it's doing X percent better than it was before anything like that. So we've never really gotten anything on Microsoft 365. This quarter, though, they they said a couple of things that I thought were really interesting. Um, enterprise mobility, 53% growth year over year to 100 million seats, which is a hard number. Um, that almost 100% has to be because of Microsoft 365, right? Um, mm -hmm. That that product obviously exists on its own, but it's part of that suite. I think that's how most of their customers have encountered it and how they're deploying it, why they're deploying it, et cetera. So I think that speaks to that a little bit. Uh, Windows 10 obviously didn't really move the needle. They used the 800 million number again. They also said that um, Office 365 commercials growth, which was 27%, was due largely to the strong performance of Microsoft 365 in education. I thought that was really specific. So I think we got a couple mm -hmm. of little Microsoft 365 tidbits in there that were interesting. And then mm -hmm. on a slightly more humorous note, did you notice that the word Japan came up three, uh, four times? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> it, it, yeah. So... And it really kind of, it stuck in my brain. So they said that uh, results in Japan were much stronger than we anticipated. Uh, Japan was responsible for 14% increase in productivity and business processes revenues, for Office 365 consumer growth, and for much of Surface revenues growth as well. <laughs> right? I mean, somehow, it's like it's the 1980s all over again. Like, the, the Japan is just like, it was all over there. It wasn't in their documentation for the quarter, I don't believe. No. But it, it was came all up in over the transcript, that. right? Yeah, yeah. That, it, that's right. That's right. I thought that was really strange. It was. It did, and and I I was having a call with them about something, and they mentioned Japan also. I'm like, wow, Japan! Like Japan's getting yeah, going Japan? shout outs left and right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. What about Xbox though? Xbox has never been a good performer in Japan, right? No, <laughs> isn't that I think been that's... kind of a rough market? Yeah. yeah, it's always been tough. I mean, uh, they um, when they first entered the market, of course, their first console was a tank, and it was this gigantic box. And a lot of uh, Japanese people live in smaller apartments or smaller homes, and it just didn't really fit in. Of course, like they, me? Uh, it, yes. And, uh, well, yeah, there's also actually, a and, Japanese <laughs> company in the game, and maybe they yeah, would just no, right. so two uh, Japanese right, companies in the game. Yeah, Culturally yeah. speaking, they don't have a handle on the Japanese game market yeah. like the Nintendo companies that are based in Japan, Sony, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Um, it's kind of like the problem Apple faces in China these days, or Samsung does too, right? I mean, when you have China Chinese-based smartphone makers who can really target that market with very specific things that Chinese people want, it's hard for these other companies that don't have that uh, to compete effectively. So that's kind of been a problem all three generations for Microsoft. Um, the, remember the uh, the original Xbox shipped with a gigantic 
controller as well. And they, because of the Japanese market, they redesigned it into something called the S controller that was so popular, it became the default controller for the Xbox 360 and has formed the basis for all of the Xbox controllers ever since. And so that stupid, big, goofy, I forget the name, they had a kind of a funny name, whatever that thing was called, the original, um, is, you know, has kind of gone by the wayside because of, well, because they were trying to, you know, get into the uh, Japanese mm -hmm. market. The big, what was the name of that thing? Someone in the chat room will know. The original Xbox <laughs> controller, OG controller. It had a funny name. I can't remember. Not the Wii. The no, it was like it was really it was almost round looking, and it had like a little. It was big, and but there was a funny the like Duke. it was like the big the Duke. Thank you. The Duke, according to Alex Gumpel, who is that's correct. A, a, the pride <laughs> of the Twit Army. That's right. Yes, Colonel Gumpel. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You've gotten your gumple in my podcast. The, <laughs> Karsten just <laughs> popped in to say, the Duke. Yep. The Thank Duke. you, Karsten. Wow. Late again, Karsten. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> About half an hour, I think, uh, Burke will show up and say, I, I don't know. Just like thrum, thrum his uh, suspenders and yeah. give you the answer. Yeah, the Duke. Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you all knew the answer. That's it. That. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely right. The Duke. Okay, we really wasted a lot of time on that. Um, no, no, we spent time wisely on that. Time wisely <laughs> on the Duke. Anything else to say about earnings? Um, well, you mentioned the $1 trillion thing. That kind of came That's and went. That's pretty but, cool, uh, yeah. But good good for them. They deserve yeah. it. Um, I, I pointed this out when I saw it. You know, when Microsoft announces their earnings, they release a bunch of documentation to their investor website. There's the press release, obviously. There's a, a, a spread. I'm sorry. A, uh, well, there is a spreadsheet as well for the financials. There is a PowerPoint presentation with some high-level high facts and some other ancillary things. There are, you know, 10Q filings and so forth. But this time, there was a, an additional document. I thought it was kind of cool that they did this. It was basically a list of all of the product releases they had had in the quarter. And I called it out on Twitter. And then Frank Shaw said, you know, thanks for noticing. This is the third quarter we've done that. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was a little odd because I actually pay a lot of attention to earnings, as you probably would know. Uh, but I never noticed that before anyway. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing. I looked at it to see. I'm going to bring it up just so I don't screw this up. But I looked at it to see what was in there, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see specifically what was going on with the consumer stuff. And it's kind of interesting because it's really not much. <laughs> right? And so when we, we have this kind of conversation around, you know, what's Microsoft doing with consumers? And it's like, well, they're not really doing all that much. Uh, that's you can kind of see it in this list. So if you if you look at that document, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of enterprise uh, services and things. And there's a handful of little things. Um, you know, it's like Microsoft launched Crackdown 3 in the quarter. They added a few new games to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, they did finally implement that new uh, developer uh, percentage right in the, in the Microsoft store so that you get a lot more money if you uh, sell stuff through there than you would in other stores. But nothing specifically for consumers. There's some team stuff, but that doesn't necessarily impact uh, consumers. Um, Office 365 is in the Office, uh, I'm sorry, is in the Mac App Store. That's neat. And then there was a couple of Bing things, and it's like, that's that's the list. <laughs> like, that's the whole. So, yeah, you know, but it's, you weren't we talk surprised, about, right? No, I mean, but it, I, I, I didn't look at it to make that point. I looked at yeah. it to say, I was just to say legitimately, like, oh, this is interesting. I'd like to see this list. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you make the list and it could fit on a, and then you're like, like oh, a recipe well. card. And you're like, oh, that's <laughs> disappointing. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, a, a related aside, uh, yesterday, I think it was on Medium, Chris Capicella posted this article about how Microsoft really is still trying to have fans of its products. And I thought the yeah. timing of this yeah. is very strange, right? Because right. maybe it's meant to coincide with all the things they're doing in gaming. But otherwise, it's kind of hard to think of them having fans around you know, Hadoop or fans around Azure <laughs> well, even, you know? <laughs> um, but we know, look, there are guys who are fans of SharePoint. Um, there are, there are. But it's a different are, you know, kind uh, of fan, right? Yeah, well, sure. This is like the uh, the YouTube creator thing or the mixer creator thing. I mean, mm -hmm. um, a guy playing a video game on uh, a streaming site is technically a creator but he's a creator right. like you know da vinci or michelangelo <laughs> like, you know, yeah know. yeah that kind of creator yeah Maybe. not exactly <laughs> um, not exactly 
but yeah, I mean, I, I understand what he was trying to say. I mean, it's certainly yeah. true. I mean, in this day and age, um, you know, fandom is a big thing. Fandom's always been a thing in tech, right? Obviously, Apple is huge fans. Yeah. Fans of Google, fans of Nintendo, fan, you know, they're Microsoft fans. Um, but yeah, as far as the consumer stuff goes, man, you got to really, you got to really squint <laughs> if you're trying yeah. to pick up the details on yeah. that stuff. I mean, the one big exception is gaming, right? Uh, there's like yeah. here's Microsoft, well, the enterprise software and services company, and then here's gaming, right? <laughs> I but again, you know, not to beat to death the my sort of um, tortured explanation of that stuff. I don't really feel gaming is a consumer business for Microsoft. Yeah. And the future of it yeah. is cloud-based. And, and actually, in, in that is. sense, right. it fits right in with what they're doing. It does. No, um, I agree. Today, it doesn't. Today, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's it, it's it really is an odd component of the overall company. But I think as we transition to the cloud, it starts to make a lot more sense. And hopefully, we'll be a lot more successful. Yeah. So all in all, a lovely, lovely day for Microsoft last week. Yeah, I mean, 9.6, what was it? Uh, 8.8 billion. 30 billion, billion, sorry, billion, not, 30 uh, billion 30 billion in revenues. Six, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Great quarter, guys. Like people say and on people the people are down call. at Apple because they made only 11 billion. So <laughs> I know. There you go. I know. There you go. Yeah, yeah. there's a different... Set of sure. expectations. Yes. Right. Like when you you call in on the you call in on the conference call and you feel obligated to say, uh, "Hi, I'm uh, Bob with Bloomberg or whatever." Congratulations <laughs> on the great quarter. Uh, yeah, you know, say, it's like do you really you have to say that. I don't. It seems like everyone does it. You know, they, they it's like do. a goofy. It's like a polite little. It's so weird. Yeah. Know. You know they're it they're is. holding the cup with the you know the pinky out while they say it. Yeah. Congratulations you know, I, on the great quarter. I, I still have this fantasy where one day I'm going to get one of those analysts to let me pretend to be them and they're going to call on me and be like, you know, Mary Meeker, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, hey, it's Mary Jo Foley and I have some Windows questions for you. Psych. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy, and that. the call ends unceremoniously. And the call is like, click. Click. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Elon Musk did that, remember, on a call? Yeah. Sure. yeah. He got, look what happened there. He got peeved. Uh, okay. Anything else to say about the earnings or should we move on? Let's move on. Move on. That's about it. The yeah. vote is move on. Before we move on, let me quickly mm -hmm. mention one of our fine sponsors today, a company that we all know and love. Talk about fans. You got at least one fan right here. WordPress.com. I started uh, doing the blog thing in the uh, early 2000s. And when I first started, there really weren't a lot of choices. There was there was Blogger. I started using it with a program called Gray Matter by one guy, Noah Gray. And then I went to uh, TypePad from the movable type folks. And then Matt Mullenweg introduced something called WordPress. And I went, ooh. And I immediately installed it, started using it, and I've been using it ever since. In fact, I just got my 12-year uh, button from WordPress.com. 12 years uh, I've been using WordPress.com. Now, there's a difference. First, when I first started using WordPress, I downloaded it. I had a server. I installed it on the server. I ran a bunch of stuff. I broke it, fixed it, broke it, fixed it. Eventually, I blogged. Then I broke it and I fixed it. <laughs> it wasn't a good experience. I think it was somewhat later that they created WordPress.com. I immediately moved because they do the hosting. They do the fixing. They don't do the breaking. Uh, but even if you break it, they fix it. And they're just great. They also uh, have the best support always there. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they're not just, uh, you know, support drones. They're really uh, users. They're WordPress experts. They're people who have their own WordPress blogs, and so they can answer your questions with, with real certainty. They're just fantastic. WordPress.com lets anyone pursue whatever it is they love by launching a site that's free to start with room to grow. Anyone, anyone can publish their ideas. That was the dream at wordpress.com whether you're an individual or a business and I should really emphasize if you're an individual very important that you have this site this one place so that when people google your name that's the place they go to that's where you put up your best stuff you show your best side or if you're a business you you build fans that's the way you build fans as, as a business by posting uh, information ideas not just hours and prices although absolutely or menus you should have all of that but if you're a restaurant, put the recipe of the week up. Get them coming back again and again. Build fans at WordPress.com. And there are never any two-week trials or hidden fees. WordPress users own their own content. That's really important. 
You could do the same thing, I guess, on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, but you don't own that content. They do. On WordPress.com, it's yours. Upload anything, pictures, text, uh, videos, music, and download it at any time. It's always there. It's always yours. I love WordPress. So flexible, so powerful. And, and some, by the way, some of the biggest publications and companies in the world use it as their website. Fortune, uh, Quartz, I can, I can go on and on and on. Millions of people use WordPress every day to turn their dreams into reality. It's free to start. Go to WordPress.com, set up your site. But if you decide to buy a plan, use WordPress.com slash Windows and you'll get 15% off any new plan purchase. In fact, when you do that, you're showing your support for Windows Weekly and we appreciate it. WordPress.com slash Windows. 15% off your new website. Thank you, Matt Mullenweg. Thank you, WordPress, for making one of the best products out there for changing the web. No wonder one-third of all the Internet runs on WordPress. One-third of all the Internet worldwide. That's such a huge number. It's almost uh, people probably it go, it goes right through your head because it doesn't make. But it's true. One-third. WordPress.com slash Windows. It's time for Credge. <laughs> I have a lot of complaints about the term "credge." I love it. What? It, what who's, it works. It sounds Come like on. when the do, when like the dog chokes something up, but nothing <laughs> comes out. It's like the dog is credging again. It does kind of have that kind of. It's so easy to use as a verb, though. I credged it. I've been credged. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm and, surprised and that another uh, yes. uh, term that has become now uh, basically a, a noun, a, no, a non-proper noun, Google, the makers of Chrome, say it's okay. At least part of it has. Um, you know, one of the insecurities we have on the Microsoft side is that, you know, Google is going to come by and snatch away all everything that's great uh, from us. And specifically with Chromium, they're worried that uh, Microsoft will go to make a commit or a change of some kind and Google will say, you know, we're not doing this anymore. We're not going to allow that. And uh, so we kind of we kind of sit here and we wait for that to happen. And it hasn't happened uh, yet. In fact, Microsoft uh, boasts that they've made over 300 uh, check-ins isn't the right term. Commits, commits. Uh, to the Chromium code base. See, that's, so got see many that's, more to go. that's what you do on an open source project, which Chromium is. And yep. Chrome is based on and Edge is based on. If you're yep. giving back, if you're not just using your, you're, you're committing. That's huge. You're, you're that means of, you're, you're part of it. You're part of the ecosystem. Yeah. And Google, even if in their yeah. heart, their yeah. dark, dark heart of hearts, hate it. In public, there's no way they can say anything but positive things. That's how open source works. Yes, but they could also act, <laughs> no. you know, differently from what they're saying. They would lose their. No, no they can't. I think they cannot. Honestly, okay. Had well, I'm, just, I'm not. By the way, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't mean to say this is my opinion. I, I'm just. We yeah. we've been burned by Google and the Microsoft uh, community a lot, and this is a fear that people have. Well, they could do, me. they could do it, but they couldn't do it by uh, keeping them out of the Chromium code set they'd have to do something mm -hmm. i mean like what mm -hmm. they'd have to i don't think it's going to happen i'm just saying as long as know, it works with chromium so which it's going to because well, they have okay, to but, <laughs> it's going to work right, with credge right but i get we're getting off topic here. i'm sorry okay. so imagine something smaller than this uh, which is plausible for google to do you you're using the new microsoft edge you go to google.com or google photos and it throws up a little thing at the top it says hey Notice you're not using Chrome. You should use Chrome. It's better. Here's why, right? Which is what happens today well, when you use Firefox that. or yeah. Fred. And yeah. Edge does that to Google right now on Windows. So, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, again, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just. I'm. I'm just describing the fear. You yes. know, that's all. Yes. That, in other yeah. words, it's not because we have given away the soul of the yes. browser to Google. Yes. In these people's minds. Now the betrayal comes, totally right? Totally so not unreasonable, yes. As a community, people are just waiting for that one moment. Like, that, see, I told you. I knew they were going to do this. And so this, uh, the fear of this uh, happened the other day, sort of, when the uh, preview version of Hangouts Meet coughed up an incompatible thing when someone tried to use it with Edge. And so, mm. of course, people writing stories like, see, here it comes. It's happening. And uh, Google eventually gave a... Uh, a quote to The Verge where they said, yeah, we're not doing that. This is still in preview. Mm. We have a whitelist thing that we do for browsers with this particular product. Uh, we will whitelist the new edge. And uh, they said, you know, we view the increased adoption of Chromium and WebRTC as positive for the entire industry. Good. You know, and they, it was right. the first public statement from Google, I believe, yeah. 
where they sort of acknowledged that Microsoft was doing this, and they said it's good. Of course, it's good. That, but but there wasn't no, there a no, thing I know. this week too about <laughs> of course docs. it is. But no, wasn't well, there a thing also about Credge not working with Google Docs? A separate thing. Docs historically never have worked well with Safari. Uh, which has always I mean, been. I think an issue. this is going to keep coming up as at least as long as Credge is in development, and maybe maybe it will stop once it's publicly released. But I think every time this happens, I don't like think it ever stops. Saying, I don't. It, it's it's yeah. like a you know a cheating spouse. <laughs> you, you know, always it's always in the back of your head. You know. <laughs> I mean, I I know it's a terrible. Sorry, it really it, is, it, but I get it. But, but you know what I mean? Like you, 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 you can, you can express your love of each other. You can talk about trust. Once it's yeah. breached, it's, it's just, over. you know, it's, it's always there. And that, and I'm sorry. And, and again, I don't mean to say this is how I feel about it necessarily, but I hear from, and I think you do too. I mean, you hear from people. This is the fear. As soon as this was announced, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. You know, how could right. Microsoft do such a thing? So right. every little incursion, every little thing like this, every little blip, Every little mistake, whatever it is, people just is going to receive a heightened yeah. uh, amount yeah. of scrutiny it because will. we're really, you know, we're yeah. worried about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, uh, not unreasonable. I'm not saying it's unreasonable. No. Um, yeah, but so you far know. so good. Let's keep our fingers crossed, right? Yeah. No, there's I, a limit I, I to how bad be Google can be about this because they made Chromium right. open source. Right. If if Microsoft started making an Android phone, they have they'd be uh, they'd be caught in the same problem, right. you know. I think this ends. Ultimately, this will will benefit Google in many ways because, I mean, obviously, you're not going to get that tracking kind of stuff for advertisers and all that. But you know, the goal of of Chrome in many ways just was to not cede control of a vital part of the chain yeah. to other people, right? That yeah. Google, yeah. there were companies standing mm -hmm. between Google and its customers. And they wanted to make sure that experience was as good as possible. Yeah, um, and they're going to get that with Edge, you know. And I'm going to get a phone call for some reason. I hear you. Aww, <laughs> like, where's that? My that's daughter. Beautiful. Is that that that's the <laughs> is that the uh, dance of the sugar plum fairy? That's beautiful. <laughs> it's on my pink phone, so I don't know why. <laughs> oh yeah, the pink phone. You yes. actually have a pink phone. It's a not pink it's phone. It's the not, not pink. pink, which is actually <laughs> oddly pink. Yeah. It's sand color. Sand, sand, pink sand, beautiful yeah. pink sand. Okay, so uh, don't don't fear the Reaper. Credge is uh, is going to live again or something. I don't know. Yeah, or something. Yeah, or we'll something. see. So or far, so good. People are saying, why do you need to do this? And I think it's we've talked about this before, but it really is a very sensible thing for Microsoft to have yes. an engine that is universal. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. customized to suit Microsoft's other needs. Yeah, there's a lot yep. of talk about, uh, you know, monoculture and everything. And uh, you know, I guess, you know, monoculture is a really ugly word that equates to, in this case, standards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, standards are monoculture. Word. Yeah, that's a good way to put um, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we want well, Microsoft standards. Microsoft stirred that pot. Remember that? When when they first didn't do Chromium, they, right. they were the ones like, the reason we're not doing it is because of monoculture, right? <laughs> Okay, um, but Microsoft, of course, is, <laughs> yeah. was uh, releasing a new version of its browser once every six months, where Google yeah. was doing it once every six weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Firefox, which I'm not sure what their exact schedule is, so I'm sure it's similar to Chrome's, has had trouble keeping up <laughs> with you know even on their schedule. So I don't know. Um, I, I look. I, we're so sensitive. <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. <laughs> This whole topic is very tough yeah, because it's it just a, uh, between Microsoft seeding a lot of this consumer technology stuff and us being worried about Google, you know, stabbing us in the back. I think there's a great sensitivity in the audience yeah. and, and wary, which, like Leo said, is understandable, but mm -hmm. I think it gets ahead of us a little bit sometimes. You also, well, yeah. I'm just, my, my only point is it's not that it's not understandable. It's just that I think the structure of an open source project really is going to protect Microsoft. Especially if they commit back to it, which they've done. Yeah, so I've, I've they're a I good member of the community. I believe that. Yeah. I I believe you. I that's yeah. what I've said. Uh, you know, people have said to me, yeah, but the people mm -hmm. pulling the levers over there at Chromium, every single one of them works for Google. And if an idiot came down down high, like saying, "Look, you're not putting that in Chromium," mm -hmm. what are they going to do? You know, and, and I think yeah. you know, I, I I hear you, and I'm not again. I'm not. This is not. I'm not expressing my own. Yeah. Yeah doubts or fears but this is no, i understand it's understandable you know, yeah 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 i don't have mm -hmm. expertise in this area it's like when microsoft was sued by the u.s government you have to kind of scramble to figure out what the heck's going on mm. um 
you know, we'll see. I, I, I have great hopes for this. There's definitely shenanigans Google could get up to. <laughs> yes, I look forward to the shenanigans. I'm, I'm not denying that. Yeah. Right. There's always an opportunity for shenanigans. But Microsoft didn't have a choice at this point, really. I mean, they had like three no. percent market share, right? And developers weren't testing against Edge Spartan because they were just like, yeah, you don't have any market share. Why I don't bother? care if my yeah, thing well, works yeah, on there. Exactly. Yep. You know? Yeah, now they can just basically present themselves as Chrome, right? They're, I, th I believe they're literally yep. spoofing the user agent on sites yep. for compatibility reasons. And there's no reason not to right. uh, when that can work. So yep. using the same engine should be yep. fine. Yep. Uh, Steve, did, I don't know if you uh, listened to Security Now yesterday. Steve talked a lot about the rate of adoption for um, 1809 versus 1803 and now 1903. Right. and the strange trajectory. <laughs> uh, adoption seemed to be slowed. And yeah. In fact, so much to the point that maybe it, people, some people are just going to skip 1809 and, and jump to Yeah, that's right. For the first time yeah. ever, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. I can make a comparison that will bring this whole thing home for everybody. Um, Windows 10 1809 is like Microsoft stock price under Steve Ballmer. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, never really went anywhere. <laughs> what? Why? I'm wondering. I mean... Part of it is Microsoft well, didn't force it uh, as hard as they could, right? Well, remember they released it, found a huge problem belatedly, yeah. pulled it back, sat on that it for six weeks. That slowed it down, yeah. And then what they, the thing is the pre, well, actually 1803 was a disaster too, but uh, 1809 made it look like a night in the park. But the yeah. two releases from the previous year had rolled out very quickly and very successfully. Uh, after the problems with, I think it was the anniversary update where there were a number of problems as well back then. I'm, I might be mixing up releases, but... Um, I think they thought they had the speed to to do this, and it, last year proved they did not. So I think with 1809 in particular, they really put the brakes on, and I think they really raised the bar on the machines that were acceptable to get it. They extended the testing periods for those you know uh, mm -hmm. known good configurations. It's just going on slow, yeah. It's in be between the six week delay and the slowness, this will be the first version of Windows 10 that does not achieve a majority of the usage share by the time it's surpassed yeah. by the next person. Isn't that weird? It's yeah. never happened mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the other issue he talked about was this issue, uh, temporary issue with the Insider build of uh, 1903 that would install on machines with detachable right. USB storage. Mm -hmm. And I tried to yeah. talk him off the ledge saying, hey, <laughs> it, that... I've been a little... I've been a little so he was, he was, uh, he was uh, negative. I, I've been a little confused about the reaction to that one. You know, he, I think um, he acted like this is ridiculous. How could it not? And he said, "Well, it's hard, and yeah, there I, is probably no, a, is... I would guess there's a switch in the install code that says if there's a uh, d if there's removable storage of any kind, temporarily unmount it while you proceed, and then yeah. remount it or something like that. And they just left it out and they'll put it back in. It's not a big thing to fix. I wouldn't think. Did they fix it already? Or not? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, it's fixed, I, I don't right? know. Did they fix it? Yeah. I think they did. There is, there's there's did. definitely a problem. You know, you, you, when you look at a disk layout or a set of disk layouts where each is partitioned in different ways, when Windows boots up into the user land part of it, those things are given drive letters. And this is something that dates back to 1985. Yeah. It's a weird and system. And it's, it's, a, it's a weird There is system. a unique GUID for every drive, mm. but mm -hmm. the drive letter is what the user sees. Yeah, the problem is uh, those things can change when Windows is offline. Right. Right. The right. Configura the way the system is told to assign the drive letters as it boots up can change. And that's the problem. So if you, you could have a removable storage, I think Leo used the example, what if you install Windows to that partition by mistake? Or, you know, you do an update and then in the process you do unplug the drive and that thing was being relied on for temporary files during the process of installation and now they're gone. Or whatever it is, like there's all these things. I, I realize it sounds unsophisticated, but we literally are using an operating system that still re uh, reserves A and B for floppy drives. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that's the you know, that's it, the issue. I think is this legacy mm -hmm. drive yeah. letter legacy. No one else does drive letters. It's crazy. No other operating so it, system does drive I, letters. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I I yes I I okay I guess uh, not allowing you to install a new version of Windows because you have removable storage installed sounds silly. A lot better than something getting screwed up right. because you try to install yep. it in that right. configuration. And fixable, it right which it sounds like they've done. I thought they did yeah. fix it, yeah. Yeah, you flip okay. a switch okay. that says, hey, 
unmount any removable storage. Now proceed. Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, there's been a lot of just like people, especially on Twitter, it's like, <laughs> uh, 2019, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no, see, I don't get that. Just, and, guys, come on. And I, I, even yeah. last week when we were talking about it, I reminded everybody that with Windows Phone and, and Android phones, removable storage is SD cards are a constant problem. Apple avoids it by not oh, yeah. allowing it on mm -hmm. iOS. That was the, window, the Windows Phone, same thing. It was a yeah. big, it was yeah. just a, you know, it's an issue. You, could, you, you press on it, it pops out a little bit, it's not there anymore. Now what? Everything's you know, it's, confused. It's, removable storage, or in this, uh, yeah, removable storage might be the problem I've been having on my Xbox One, where uh, you know it's supposed to sit there in the background and update all the time, and I don't really turn it on and see system updates, but I do turn it on to go to play a game. It's like, oh, hold on, we have to install an yeah, eighteen gigabyte that. update. I have that problem too. Like, guys, why? Yeah, why? Why? Why wasn't this installed automatically? Oh, you think it's because we have USB drives attached? That's what someone said, and oh. actually, that makes me wonder. That does make me wonder. That makes, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll remove it. Yeah, because... And I will say, by the way, not to completely contort this discussion, but you can even have a situation where a game is installed on the internal drive and DLC or added right. other content is installed on the other drive. Right. And that screws stuff up, too. I had a, a game the other day where it said I couldn't play a map that I have because it was corrupted and the map was on the external drive and the game, at, you know, that kind of thing. Just, it's, it, yeah. There's all kinds of screwy stuff. And they, to make matters worse, have a, have a mover, a storage mover, which I've, yeah. in my experience, has been a kind of disaster. So um, yeah, it's slow. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe I was just impatient, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's better. I better not to use it uh, in my experience. Anyway, okay. So there you go. Uh, unfortunately, the other thing Steve loves to harp on with Windows, he mm -hmm. really does not like Windows 10. <laughs> but he's off XP, isn't he? You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on seven. Oh, you know, he was, yeah, he was on Windows 2000 for a long time. Yeah, which was he was on I XP thought, for years. 2000 was yeah. great, but then yeah. unfortunately, because Steve has MSDN, he discovered the long-term service con yeah. commitment or yep. contract. Oh yeah, the LTSC version, which is uh, mm. doesn't even have a browser. Somebody pointed out to him, you know, Steve, you don't even get a browser with this. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, that just makes me oh, love it more. I, like it. I love it. It's nothing. It's stripped down. Uh, and, of course, the the complaint he makes, which is a complaint I think a lot of people make, is all of, even on Windows 10 Pro, you know, the the Candy Crush and the and the games and the solitaire and all that stuff. And yeah. there was some so hope last, that that would be gone right. in 1903. There's a convoluted story behind this, but... Last week, there was a report from some people on Twitter, or some people reported on Twitter, rather, that they had done clean installs of Windows 10 uh, Home, I think in one case, and they didn't get any of the Candy Crush stuff. This has wow. been one of my big dreams since the beginning. I mean, it's, it, it, where Dream all my big. dreams are coming Dream true this big. year, I'm like, this could happen, you know? <laughs> so I did my own clean install of Windows 10 Pro, and yeah, Candy Crush was there twice, and then some other baloney candy crush game whatever it was called and i was like okay well i guess this is not the case so mary joe you say you someone has apparently explained this to some degree yeah so this question came up from woody leonard and michael niehaus who we talked about last week on the show as well um who works for microsoft emx modern deployment team he said um here's how it works enterprise education or pro when domain joined only you only get productivity apps and with enterprise and education, you can t even turn those off altogether. But if you go pro local MSA account, games and productivity automatically install. There it is. So you set up your new PCs with local MSA, right? Yep. Local. Well, I do local account first and then it. MSA. Uh, well, how, well, how, how would oh, I do well, it? Well, you're not a, <laughs> a domain join, right? Yeah, I don't have a domain. <laughs> That's the problem. So if you have a yeah. domain. Yeah. Because you're a school or work, sure. Right. Well, and so there's some logic behind that. Microsoft's saying, "Oh, well, you probably don't want to play Candy Crush because you're." It's in business like saying, you know, the, the serial killer uh, employed some logic uh, when he was stalking <laughs> his victims. Um, yeah, you know, I, I sure. I mean, I, I look. Even if I had a domain, I could use. I wouldn't because I want to experience what people are experiencing. Normal and, people, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. To joining um, a domain, and it's, should we explain that? That's that means you're there's a server, uh, there's a host. Yeah, Active you, Directory or Azure Active Directory. Um, instead of a Microsoft account, you have a corporate account that's managed by Microsoft Technology. You can sign into Windows 10 with that, just like you can sign in with your Microsoft account. Got it. It has the many of the same. In fact, you can tie a Microsoft account to that account for various things if you want to do that. But 
Um, yeah, it's an alternative for people in work or in education as well. They use the, the same nice. scheme in education. So maybe that's why some people are telling you, I don't see it anymore I because they were on domain joined accounts. One guy was on home. Oh, he was? Hmm. Yeah. That yeah. was that was what got me excited. I, yeah. Honestly, home because can't that can't domain, be domain right? joined. Yeah. Right. 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 Hmm. 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 So I don't know. I, I Puzzling. Yeah. If you're not at work or at school, you should play Candy Crush. <laughs> okay. Everyone well, should. I, Look, it's not hard to remove these things. Um, no, and in fact, I just, do that, and I've talked about this before, and people have said, well, give me your script. It's not ready for prime time. Eventually, I'll do a blog post. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about your script today, actually. It's nice. I mean, is, two lines, you can remove all the Is there a PowerShell script? Yeah, it's PowerShell. Is what yours is? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I had heard somebody else say this, too. So Nick they Craver and Jesse Frizzell uh, yep. have, both have gists on GitHub. And mm -hmm. I took a little bit of each. She took some of Nick's. Uh, I took a little bit of both. Mixed that mm -hmm. up. <laughs> stirred it. Yep, some of the stuff Ionute. doesn't work mm -hmm. anymore. So it's wor It's probably worth pursuing you yeah. know, what the newer commands are. But, but mm -hmm. my, my favorite one is a single line command that just deletes everything from the store except the store app. Right. Now, that you may, that's probably not safe to do. So the, the way I um, end up doing it is making a list of the apps and using and iterating through it, and I can then comment out anything I want to keep. Right. Um, that's probably a better, a safer way to do it. But that's the problem with publishing something like this. I have my own uh, needs. That are yeah. yeah, this is in the notes. You know, it is uh, an end user can uninstall far more built-in apps now in 1903 than was possible before. Okay. And power so it's a manual is process, worth right? Learning. Click, you know. I mean, it's not hard. Sure, it's a little. The <laughs> syntax is not beautiful it's very microsofty but it's uh, it's intelligible and it's, then uh, you can yeah it's very it's like c sharp it's yeah it's kind of <laughs> weird kind of strange it's, it's very microsoft it's, it's very you know what it is it's yeah, enterprisey um hmm. yeah it's just it's verbose it's verbose it's verbose <laughs> but uh it's okay i can live with it and uh, it's once you make the script you know, if you make it and you really make it the way you want it, you can, you can, it's uh, reproducible. And that's the whole point. In fact, that was Jesse Frizzell's blog post. She says, moving from Linux to Windows, how to make reproducible, a reproducible build that I can always count on. Right, right, right. And that's what you need, Paul, because, you know, oh my God. you install Windows <laughs> weekly. That's what I rely on. That's the problem. You know, you're looking, anytime you're trying to document anything, you want yeah. it to be yeah, reproducible. reproducible. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that so many different people have seen different things yeah. is terrible on many Disturbing. levels. But for someone like me, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's really, it's really bad. Yeah. So um, Alex is giving me um, a link to a TechNet piece. More on included Windows 10 apps. Oh, this is from last year. So this wouldn't be about... Um, yeah. There are provisioned this, apps you can remove. There are apps that are installed from the store when you first sign in. Right. You can prevent on some SKUs. Yeah. Um, this has changed. Uh, yeah, this, this is old. So, yeah. Come but there, there they are. There look at those is. great Isn't apps. That awful? Jeez, wow. <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you look at those tiles on the right side, um, some of those are installed, right? Uh, some of them aren't. Some of them are basically a tile-based advertisement right. for the game. So it's just a stub. If you... Mm -hmm. You can yeah, right click, you click and run on pin it, and the store gone. opens. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, you can un you can just remove it, right? Yeah. But I mean, it won't it, say it won't offer you an uninstall. If no, because it it's not installed. Right. So if you only see unpin, you don't see uninstalled. Then just unpin it, and you're done. But it's actually, such a stupid I thing to put people through. You do this too. I think we talked about that. I yeah. unpin all of those tiles, and then I just get a much more normal looking menu. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get the tile. It, it it's at least smart enough not to expand that whole right side if you just delete all those tiles. Yeah. That to me but makes, again, yeah, it, makes it look one good. by one. You have to do this. That's the thing. Oh, it's, it's a pain. It's a, yeah. Well, nineteen oh three for people starting fresh has the new menu, right? It, more simplified and oh, streamlined. There are start fewer menu. tiles. That's true. Good. Yeah. If you if you if you go back to that other picture, you'll see there were two columns of tiles. Yeah. And uh, now they just have the one. Oh, that's a. Big They're problem. getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eventually, it will look just like the one in Windows Seven. Yeah, it will. Yeah, which is what everybody wants and pays five mm. bucks for classic shell for. <laughs> yeah. Now you know. So now you know the rest of the story. 
I would be. I'll have to look and see if there's a PowerShell way to remove those tiles. I I don't know if there is. It's probably too kind of specific. The problem is it might change um, yeah, that's every what time. I mean. That's what I mean. Uh, a different computer. You know, it's probably yeah. a random selection of twelve potential <laughs> tiles, and they give you, you six way, of them or something. Yeah, you need a way to kind of make a universal yeah. solution, or it's not. It's not going to work. Yeah. Um, let's see. Windows 10 1903 requires, get ready for this, 32 gigs of storage, which shouldn't be a problem Hooray. unless you bought one of those 16 gig tablets. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. That's interesting you just said that because that's where my mind goes when I hear this. I was yeah. going to ask Mary Jo this mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Did you think of it that way or did you think of it as you need that much leftover storage to install a new version of Windows 10 on your hard drive? Oh. Oh. Like, right? like whatever you other have you could... plus 32. Is that's that what, the, I mean, what you, I, what's that feature in 1903 where they're setting aside um, a set amount of storage? Yeah. What's the name of that? I, whatever that is. The 32 but... gigabyte initiative. I don't, I don't know. It's, um, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, think I don't. that's a name. I mean, but... a win, no. I mean, a Windows. Set aside uh, storage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the name of the feature. Sorry. But the, I mean, you don't need 32 gigs of storage. Right, you don't. No. To install Windows. Um, no. Is, but, well, but that's so the what, question. Is it free? But technically, you do. Well, <laughs> yeah. So that's the question. Reserve so what storage. I, here's, what, here's what I know from the from the very first days of Windows 10, uh, the storage requirements to to for a device to have Windows 10 on it have not changed until now. Mm, right. Um, right. I think it was 16 gigs for 32 bit versions and 20 gigs for some reason for 64 bit. Those are completely unrealistic, as is 32 bit, 32 gigs, by the way, as is 64 gigs. Um, I, I mean, I think for most people, 128 is kind of the minimum. I also think there's an important conversation to be had around the type of storage. You know, you don't want to use any kind of a, I don't know, like SD or a EMMC type storage. You know, you want real SSD, the faster yeah. the better, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I, I, the way I read this was this has to do with devices. And back in the Windows 8 days, very beginning Windows 10, there was this notion that maybe Windows 10 would run on tablets, not just PCs. And that some of these tablets would be like mini tablets and they would have tiny amounts of storage and maybe they have SD expandability, whatever. And you could get one that had 16 or 20 gigs of storage, which is ridiculous, but you could. What is the Surface Go? I mean, the Surface Go must, uh, the base is 64, isn't it? 64 gigs? I think so. I think so. This is, seems I get like whatever a really the middle small amount. The middle storage. one I get is what I got. <laughs> yeah, so it's 128 gigs. I think when you go to 128, you get the SSD as well, which That's makes sense. That's why we, yeah. we both listened to you, Paul. Yeah, we, we, we took your advice. Yes. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. I think they want people to have a good experience too, right? And I, I think yeah. when you were pretending you could have a good experience with 16, it was not like mm -hmm. not like not – Good for them, not good for the customer, and I think it's just good to be upfront and say this is where this is what you need. So stop well, pretending. Remember, it will de well, devices would ship with no ro spare space, on right? Them, basically, yeah, right? You didn't even true. have enough room to install. I was always amazed I mean, that Microsoft yeah. allowed that. To be honest, yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I get it I, uh, in a way. I mean, but there's a big difference between uh, minimum and recommended, right? You know, there is. Um, 20H1. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple builds since last week of this. And there isn't still very much going on with 20H1 other than Fastering and Skip Ahead testers both are getting 20H1 builds now. And no one is getting 19H2 still. We don't know when that's going to happen or who is going to get it. Um, but 20H1, they added last week... Support for more languages for dictation, um, mm. which is nice. They also added a fix. So if you were stuck, if you were a fast ring tester stuck on um, the 1903 build and you couldn't get to 20H1, now you can if you install a cumulative update. And beyond that, there wasn't a lot. I mean, they separately, they are working on the Your Phone companion app uh, so that if you're an Android user... With version 7.0 or above, you're going to be able to start seeing your phone notifications on your Windows 10 PC, not just 1903 or mm -hmm. 20H1, but even further back. I, I actually have this enabled now on the Surface Go. It works. Wow. Yep. Okay. You can't really act on them, though, right? You just see them? Is that how you it works? You can. Well, you know, so you know what was funny? I acted on one and it worked. 
Okay. And then what does I that mean? What, what did you do? Could, could you so me? I get a notification, just a text message. Um, no, what was the other one I got? I got something and I tried to do something with it and I thought it worked mm -hmm. once. And then the second time I got a notification about an email or something, yeah. it wouldn't let me do anything. I just saw it. Okay. Basically. Okay. I, I haven't used it yet. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. So it does, it's starting like. to roll out. Um, mm -hmm. and the whole full screen mirroring capability that they've talked about is still mm -hmm. a work in progress. I think Surface Go is supposed <laughs> to be the first thing to get that too, for some reason. Okay. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so your phone is continuing to be updated and enhanced, which is nice. I still find yeah. it a little kludgy. Um, I think that's, I forget how Google did it. Google, Wait, however, reason. Google did it with Chrome, I thought was a little cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Google has a web app version of their messages right. app. And so it's, yeah. it's fairly simultaneous. I mean, it's, I, I think the performance on that thing is great. It is. Um, yeah. But you have to be using that app on the phone as you well, do. obviously. Yeah. Uh, which a lot of people don't probably use. I happen yeah. to like it, but you know, whatever. But I, that, you know, Microsoft's in a hole here. They don't control the mobile platform. So no. they're basically doing yeah. what they can do. Yeah. But, but so far, 20H1, you know, supposedly Microsoft's testing it early because there's all this great stuff that they have to have a long testing runway for. But we don't know what any of that is, <laughs> if that's actually true. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they'll make more promises at Build. It'll be fun. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they'll talk about it. Who knows, right? <laughs> or maybe they won't. Um, I bet they do. I probably not in the keynote. Yeah. Uh, what else? And then the, another twenty H one build came out today, and there's absolutely no new features in that. It's a bunch of fixes. Which is fast. Kind of curious, isn't it? <laughs> to release a build like so. that. Yeah. It was odd. Um, unless there's some if... fix in there that is pertinent okay. to something else. Uh, build is next week. I mean, thing. yeah, they did. Sorry. That's still there. It's, it's the still not fixed, right? It's still yeah. not fixed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was I was confused by today's build. Yeah, I think a lot of people were. <laughs> Everybody's like, so that's it. Like, what else is there? Anything so this thing's coming out in a year, and you've released a new build that has no new features. Hmm. Interesting. Well, the features that are there, they're trying to get right. <laughs> I mean, they I they take they usually do idea. take some time to add new features to a new build, but I feel like it's been with skip ahead since February. Yeah. So now, well, plus the other one is uh, you know nineteen oh three is complete, so yeah, seems like when are they going to start doing? It. Yeah, maybe yeah. post build, or maybe not until they start testing nineteen H two, because however that's going to happen, some of those features are going to come. So, well, we keep yeah. hearing some of the features from 20H1 come back to 19H2. So that might yeah. be why 19H2 isn't being tested yet because they don't want to tip their hand about which of those features are coming back. I don't know. <laughs> guessing, just more guessing. Yep. So yeah, we're kind of in limbo in builds right now in Windows 10 sure. builds. We already talked about uh, market share. Yeah, just real thirty percent yeah. usage, huh? Not even, yeah, it's like twenty nine point six or That's something. That's pretty low at this oh. stage of the game. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean that. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't look this up, but I mean, if you were to go back and look at where eighteen oh three was when eighteen oh nine was coming out, it was. 80%, right. you know, something like that. I'm sure. But that's Microsoft, right? Bec it, I mean, you can't defer mm -hmm. it, right? Unless your business. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, a pro user can. Um, yep. For how long? But I no, I think it has to do with the the measured way that they're presenting it yeah. to users. I, I think they yeah, and, that's and Microsoft's choice because I mean as they, we've all yeah yeah I think skipping right at, right to the next one will make tons of sense. So they're well, not think, doing it because there's a large number of devices that aren't compatible with 1809. They're doing it. Because right. they figure, well, who cares? Let's just go, let's just skip it. <laughs> well, no, look, we, we talk a lot about how twice a year uh, requiring users to upgrade their computer to a new version of Windows 10 is kind of an onerous task yeah. for a lot of people. What if you had to do it twice in the three-month time span, you mm -hmm. know, which is what could happen? So I, I think that's explaining it. They may have entire classes of uh, device types, however they do this, that they know to be good for 1809, but they also know are going to be good for 19H1. Right. Let's let's sit on that. Um, it, it would be better for those people to go to the next one. Is it that onerous? 
I mean, doesn't well, it just kind of happen overnight or whatever? I mean, is, is it, I mean, how bad <laughs> yeah, so is it? I don't know. It, it, it depends. It's it it certainly has gotten better. I mean, one thing I do give them credit for is um, they have increased the amount of pre-install that happens while the machine is interactive, and right. you don't see it happening. It's happening in the background. Uh, it will reboot. You could lose data when that happens. Uh, anytime you install a new version of Windows, that's a chance for something bad to happen. You're not just installing updates. You're doing a wipe and replace, and then all your data and um, applications are being moved back over after the fact. So maybe it's, it would be uh, more appropriate to say it's not that it's hard, but that if something goes wrong, why take a it's chance? Bigger. If it, something it's bigger. It's a wrong. much bigger... Yeah. yeah, this is not... You know, calling this thing an update is uh, minimizing the impact it has on your system. It's a... Yeah. It is literally a version upgrade. It is as big as going from Windows 7 to Windows 8. It, every And we're doing it twice a year now. Yeah. You know, it's a... It's something um, that Microsoft, before Windows 10, did once every three years at the most. Mm -hmm. um, I guess just, I'm biased because I like new. Uh, I want yeah. updates. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, I and, too. and honestly, every machine I have is on 1809 without problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. yes. I almost... Open the window. Open the Therat window. <laughs> the and, and, magic and window? The magic window. So I, uh, I've been moving to 1903. I, I really like it. I like that new light mode quite a lot. Um, mm. It's. I think it's fine. It's been fine on the computers I've used. Um, that's anecdotal, right. I guess. But I just, I don't I, know. I, I, I didn't want to turn it off. I think this on, one's going to go. Off I think it's going to go well. And it'll come mm. soon, right? May, right? We're in May. Late well, May. if Late if May. history is any guide, Leo, <laughs> it may, I mean, I would be surprised if they rolled this one out quickly. I I, I don't think they're going to do to this one what they did to eighteen oh nine, right? I don't think we're going to be sitting here in September saying, "Wow, there's only thirty percent of computers are updated." I mean, I think it will go better than that. But um, so if if you don't have eighteen oh nine and then you get mm -hmm. offered nineteen oh three, is it going to yep. install eighteen oh nine then install nineteen oh three? Yeah, no, you can go straight. Yeah. I've done this with other versions straight. of Windows okay. 10. Yeah, okay. yeah. It will always grab the light. It, remember, th these are essentially cumulative updates as well, right? So th there's no pre-requirement in 1903 that you have 1809 first. That would be that would be horrible. Oh, <laughs> there's a bad that experience. Was, that's why that I was would thinking, be, ooh. Yeah. That would yeah. be horrible. I, no, I've been away for a couple of years at uh, college or whatever and not come <laughs> home. And, yeah, exactly. You can't right. get service yeah. pack two unless you get service yeah. pack one. Yeah. And can't oh, that used to be yeah. the case. Yeah. That used to be the case. Right. Um, right. No, not not for these. Not not for uh, no, like, feature. Updates. When I get when I get 1809 offered on the Surface Go, I think it took me like 15 minutes at most to mm -hmm. move to it. Yeah, so great. that was pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. quick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the I mean, on the flip side, I spent a good part of this past weekend installing updates on the the nuke that i have and then uh doing the release preview thing where you you know get 1903 and then you go back you know it actually i was kind of surprised how long that took but that's not a normal right process right i think you know when end users get this thing through windows update i think it's going to go really smoothly and um hopefully <laughs> not well that's my i mean i i look yeah no i feel is, good about it too, microsoft but, overreacted yeah. they're gonna they're gonna get yeah. it right it's sitting in release preview and we haven't heard any people like screaming about it in release preview, right? I mean, no one's been no. like, wow, this thing is a mess. You know, no, you haven't heard that. I, of course, we don't know how many people are in release preview. We don't know. So, you know, what I, just... you know what I found out? I, I asked about this recently. Mm -hmm. So I said, which ring has the most users? And they said, sometimes mm -hmm. fast ring, sometimes release preview. Hmm. So wow. it kind of varies between those two. So they're hmm. both big. Um, okay. I'm surprised to hear that. Just That's good. good. News. Me too. Yeah. Is yep. that uh, window still open if you wanted to uh, get 1903? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just did it. Yeah. Okay. I might do that. And if you want to know how I mean, eventually, back to last you, week and you'll have something better than a window soon uh, because you'll be able to just download the ISO. Yeah. yeah. Late May is what they keep telling us. Late May is yeah. when it goes to the mainstream. So I have to It'll wonder, be on VLC. Though, if this not is not the new normal, the, the what we saw with uh, 1809 is not the new normal that Microsoft Rather than incur problems with incompatible hardware and yep. issues, maybe just isn't super fast about pushing it out and uh, lets Look, people I, seek it and that kind of thing, but not. I, I, I'm sorry, I just, I just the topic is so disturbing to me. I I still <laughs> feel very strongly that twice a year is too much for this kind of thing. But if they're going to mm -hmm. stick to that, which apparently they are, I think mm -hmm. they need to have some kind of a, a system where. Your PC doesn't just go into a pool of known good configuration that part of the calculus is, well, what was the last time they installed a feature update? And that maybe they should try to space those things out over a six-month period. That's yeah. all. 
Not a bad uh, idea. Because you could get, you know, what makes your PC compatible with one version of Windows is going to change with the next one, maybe. And mm -hmm. you might get, you know, the the first one late and you might get the second one early and that might put those things too close together. And I really think that part of the scheduling of it should take into account the computer itself and when it was updated last with a feature mm -hmm. update. Uh, just to spread those things out. So this could be the new normal. Yeah. I think keeping it in release preview for a month should be the new normal. I think that's At least. a good way to end yeah. the testing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Assuming that something substantive is happening there. You know, that's my... Uh, right, I'm that's not, true. Uh, yep. Are we just letting it sit like kind of boil, you know, like a, a sous vide or yeah. something? It's well, just what's the there. hurry? Yeah. These are not security <laughs> patches. These are feature <laughs> updates. That's true. That's true. Well, there's a new, but there's a new color scheme, Leo. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's so important. really, again, I say. No, so, I mean, I mean, for, <laughs> for enterprises, I don't though, the sometimes, <laughs> no, sometimes the enterprises do get new security compliance, those kind of features that I think they would want to have, okay. or that Microsoft would want them to have. But I, I don't think you know, emoji, this and that. No, but. Well, well, that's kind of ironic because the enterprises are the slowest to adopt these feature updates. They usually are. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Um, all right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I don't think they're going to stop doing twice a year. I haven't heard anything about that at all. I, again, all the changes they just made give me hope that anything is possible. Yeah. What a he world. says as he drives his bike into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm the king us, of the world. Let us pause because I, I want to welcome a new sponsor to the program. And uh, then we'll come back and there's lots more. Yes, there's Xbox News. And cloud news. We've left the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> but first, a word from Pulseway, a ridiculously cool IT management program. You, I think you're going to like Pulseway. Imagine being able to manage and control your entire IT environment from the palm of your hand from a mobile device. Reset users' passwords from your phone. Kill a process that's slowing down a critical machine. While you're out walking the dog in the park, Oh, yeah, let me just kill that process on the machine. That would be wild, wouldn't it? Well, that's Pulseway. Pulseway lets you monitor, manage, and control. And it's not just Windows, by the way. All your Windows, Linux, and Mac systems from anywhere using any device, including smartphones. If you're responsible for a network of computers, especially if it's a heter heter heterogeneous network of computers, Pulseway is amazing. See real-time status, see system resources, see who's logged in, who's not. View network performance. You can manage Windows updates from the park on your phone. You got IIS servers running. You got SQL servers. You got Exchange or Active Directory. Absolutely. Monitor VMware. Monitor Hyper-V, SNMP-enabled devices. You, that makes it even easier, right? And more. Always be in control. React to issues right away. Fix problems wherever you are at any time. You, if you're on beeper duty, <laughs> this is a must-have. You can run commands in terminal. I like that, as you know. Manage running processes, restart services, apply critical updates, restart systems, everything. And, of course, because it's in terminal, you can automate everything. Create and deploy custom scripts to automate all your IT tasks, saving time, increasing your overall efficiency. Automate anything from backup jobs to security checks. You can do them on schedule. You can do them on demand at any time from a device closest to you. I just I, This is how it ought to be. How about patch management? You can scan, install, and update all your systems on the go. You can do it on demand or schedule it to be executed at a particular date. Quickly and effortlessly connect to a computer as if you were sitting right in front of it without opening any ports or creating any firewall rules. This is their remote desktop control. It switches between screens, sends keystrokes, and controls the mouse without having to travel to the machine. It reminds me of that great video from some years ago where the guy, the IT guy's playing Quake. <laughs> and he switches back and forth as he's playing Quake without, without missing a beat. What, your computer won't start? All right, hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> Visit Pulseway.com slash twit. Learn how thousands of organizations and sysadmins are making their IT environment not only more efficient, but, and this is really important, more secure. Try it free, two weeks free, at Pulseway, P-U-L-S-E-W-A-Y dot com slash twit. Pulseway.com slash twit. We thank them. Brand new sponsor. Welcome. 
thank you for your support, and we thank you, the listeners, for uh, using that special address because that way they'll know. Oh, they heard it on Windows Weekly. Pulseway.com slash Twitter. Try it free for two weeks. I think you'll like it. It's a powerful mobile first RMM. <laughs> yeah, it made me laugh too. Now, back we go. I guess it's gonna be Mary Jo Foley first because Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take a twenty minute walk around the neighborhood. Because <laughs> um, it's time for the cloud. Here yeah, comes there's the cloud. A there's a lot of cloud stuff this week, and it's not surprising given Build is next week, and you know Azure is going to be a big part of Build, so they're probably kind of testing the waters with some of this stuff. Um, what just happened to that link? <laughs> Sorry. Um, first up, we've got some news on Azure regions. So when Microsoft talks about Azure, they love to say, Azure has the most regions of any cloud. We have 54, and they've been using that 54 number for a while now. But I'm guessing next week, maybe they're going to up that number a bit. Uh, before they're doing that, though, they're taking away one Azure data center, uh, sorry, an Azure region. The U.S. government Iowa region is being retired April 30th, 2020. So if you happen to have any data in that region, you've got to get it out of there. You've got to migrate it or you're going to lose your information, it sounds like. So if you go to, um, I've read a blog post about this, go to the link. Microsoft will tell you the details about migrating off. They didn't really give a lot of reasons why they're retiring this data center, other than it sounds like we have better ones with more stuff. <laughs> so we <laughs> that's kind of sounded like why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you should go somewhere else and use one of our other regions and data centers. But then I think there is more because I got a tip last week from Bjorn Anderson, whose name is Diverse Tips on Twitter. Who's also and the lead singer of ABBA. Many, many people don't remember uh, that. Well, that explains why he knew this, because <laughs> he pointed to a couple of listings that Microsoft added to a document for two new regions in Sweden, plus a West US 3 region. Um, none of those exist currently. We, we kind of had a hint on the Sweden, but we didn't know about US West 3. So it sounds like there's some more regions coming to Azure, and I'm sure that uh, if there are, we're going to hear a lot about that at Build. Here's a more interesting one, though. This has been something rumored a long time in coming. Microsoft and Dell announced this week some new Azure VMware integration. So why Dell? Dell Technologies is the majority shareholder of VMware, and if, you, if you're a historian on things about VMware and Azure, like I happen to be, mm. you might remember two years ago, Microsoft made a big deal out of bringing VMware to Azure. And they said, hey, we've got this working. You can bring your VMware workloads over to Azure. And VMware flipped out when they, when they announced this. And they said, you're doing this on your own. We didn't certify any of this. We're not guaranteeing it. We're not backing it up, blah, blah, blah. Do it at your own risk. This week, though... Microsoft and Dell announced now VMware is coming to Azure and, and that you're going to be able to run various VMware workloads on Azure. It will be VMware certified. Um, interestingly, I found out later, these were not developed by Microsoft or VMware. There are partners who are doing these developments in conjunction with Microsoft. There's Cloud Simple and another partner called VirtuStream, and they're the ones doing the new Azure VMware solutions. So they're not exactly apples to apples with what you can do with VMware on AWS, but still very interesting that you can finally do this and everybody seems happy about it. Um, next, another thing that I think we could hear about at Build next week. Microsoft's talked a lot about this idea of virtual agents. Cortana, yeah, we know that's kind of on the back burner a bit for Microsoft, even though there are three build sessions right now on, in the session list all about Cortana. But they're definitely more about Cortana as a business type thing, like enterprise skills for Cortana, how to connect Cortana with IoT. Uh, but if, you pay, if you've been paying attention about how Microsoft's trying to shift this conversation, at CES this year, they started talking about the idea of virtual assistants instead of just Cortana. 
And they've got a thing called the Virtual Assistant Solution Accelerator, which is a fancy name for a bunch of templates and code that you can use to make your own digital assistant with its own personality, its own voice and all that. I think we're going to hear more about that next week. Probably hear more about how that can work with all kinds of different devices. Um, I also saw a session about non-developer conversational design tooling. So I think they're going to go after the low code, no code set and say, hey, you don't have to be a developer, a traditional developer to create your own bots and your own virtual assistants. We have all kinds of tooling to help you do that. Uh, so yeah, if you're if you're looking for buzzwords for next week, I'd look at bot framework, Azure bot service, cognitive services, um, virtual assistant, all these things around Microsoft's whole idea of conversation as a service. The idea is even though we don't have a speaker, even though we aren't as high at all in market share as some of our competitors, we still have a play in the voice assistant space. And, and again, all that runs on Azure. That's the Azure connection. Um, what else? Last thing I would talk about in the cloud space from this week was Microsoft rebranding Bing as Microsoft Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's interesting. You know, Microsoft actually has a pretty good ad business around Bing, and now it's going to be called Microsoft Advertising. Um, I think Bing, the name Bing has kind of tarnished their advertising business a bit because Bing, you know, even though it has about 30% market share now in the in the web search engine space, it's not seen as a front runner. Nobody still says, I binged it, unless you say it ironically. <laughs> Um, and even then, people are going to scratch even their heads. Then, yeah, even then, people what are like, you, you did what? what? Huh? <laughs> I credged it. I binged yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> only, only Windows Weekly listeners would even. <laughs> they would only know. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they. I think somebody, a, a few people actually said to me, they used to call Bing ads Microsoft well, That's what I was going to ask. Is, I, it seems like they the went day. back. Yeah. yeah. They did. Oh, they that's did. funny. Um, and, you know, part of it is, as we've talked about on Windows Weekly, a lot of Microsoft properties are trying to rebrand as Microsoft something instead of the brand names like um, Surface. You know how you say mm -hmm. Surface on the back and now it says Microsoft on the back of the device. Mm -hmm. Their whole the whole idea is like, let's have everything share that common one brand, which is Microsoft. That's our Uber brand. And I think they're doing that now with the advertising stuff. But is Bing going away as the as the consumer search play for Microsoft? No, they made it that very clear. There were I, I think there were some rumors like Microsoft might try to get out of that space or do away with it. But um, they're saying nope, we're in, we're in there with Bing and we're going to keep going as our commercial web search property. So yeah. And, and That's it, all your cloud news. As you pointed out, next week's a big week, and uh, it's a big week it for is. you, and it's a big week for Windows Weekly too. Uh, of course, Microsoft Build uh, mm -hmm. takes uh, takes off Monday out of Redmond. Uh, you guys are going to be up there. The keynote mm -hmm. we will be streaming live. What is it? Eight thirty a.m. Pacific. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. 11.30 uh, Eastern time, and we'll stream that at twit.tv slash live. And with your permission, Paul and Mary Jo, I'll continue to take the stream from Microsoft when you guys come on stage because you yeah. guys are going to do the the official Microsoft wrap-up. We sure. are. What is, what is that going to consist of? What is that? Well, this is a Mancherian <laughs> candidate moment for us. Um, it is. <laughs> We're supposed to help make sense and... Um, help people have some context around what Satya right. said, because, you know, Satya, he's, he's an interesting speaker and sometimes it's a little hard to get his words to come back down to earth. <laughs> they didn't tell you that's your job. I guarantee you. So that's how you I'm Paul, we're going to put you on stage to explain <laughs> mm -hmm. whatever the hell it was that Satya said. Satya Nadal is a robot. Could you speak to the, the meat bags <laughs> and the language that they understand? No, but I am, I think it's very <laughs> flattering <laughs> That of all the people in the world, they chose you two to do that uh, sure. is great. And so, uh, yes. you know, uh, I think uh, we're we're all honored that they chose the Windows Weekly uh, host yeah, to do that. Yeah, cool. it's And Seth is so awesome. The whole team there is he great. Is. And it's, it's, it's a really and nice no one else thing. wants to do it. And no one else wants to do it. We were literally I, the 19th I'm people. I don't yeah. think that's I'm true. I think, no, I'm kidding. I think anybody would love I to do it. I think that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> How big is the audience in the, in the house there? 
uh, thousands? Like 5,000, isn't it? 5,000. You're going to be, and it's going to be like a stadium. And then, well, oh, we're not, we're not going to well, be on the keynote stage. We're not going to be, we're oh, not going to be. You're yeah, behind yeah. the scenes, behind. Yeah. Yeah. They have like a big setup where they do Channel 9 interviews. Got it. Got it. Um, so Don't get me there. wrong. I would take on 5,000 people, but. <laughs> oh, I know. It's fun. <laughs> That's, yeah. He would. Yeah. Nerd, nerd cella, we call mm -hmm. it. Exactly. So, um, then we'll be doing Windows Weekly Monday instead of on Wednesday yep. of next week. At what did you say? One thirty Pacific, four thirty Eastern. I think one one, one p.m. One p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks very much to the .NET Rocks gangs and Richard yep. Campbell for yep. letting us yep. use their facilities there. So, mm -hmm. Windows Weekly next week will not be on Wednesday. In fact. If you tune in at the regular time, you're going to see iOS today, which will be very confusing. <laughs> Let me tell you how disappointing that's going to be. It's going to be very confusing. So, they don't spend a lot of time on Xbox. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just so you know, that's what happened. Who does that show? Is Megan on that show? Megan and I, yeah. Megan, you know, nice. Yeah, it's it's a good show, but it's not it's no Windows Weekly. Let's that's what that I always say. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good show, but no way this week. In any event, uh, make sure you tune in uh, for the keynote on Monday and then following almost immediately after Windows Weekly with Paul and Mary Joe. Now, Paul, it's your turn. Let's talk Xbox. Got, my, got a nice rest from my voice. Yes. <laughs> so last, I think it was in March, which I guess is not no longer last month, but a little over a month ago, Microsoft announced that they were going to bring the Halo Master Chief Collection to the PC. Long overdue, exciting news. Um, there's a lot of games in there. Uh, in fact, they've I think Halo Reach is being added to that collection. I don't think that was part of it originally. And what the plan was is to test one game at a time, and they're going to go chronologically in the game timeline. So uh, Halo Reach is actually going to be the first game that they port. Um, they had previously promised that that would happen by the end of April, you will notice that today's date is May 1st, and that has not started. And so uh, they've apologized, and they've decided not to provide any further timelines <laughs> because they don't want to miss them again, but they plan to start that soon. So that it will happen. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go sign up for the Halo Insider Program because everything at Microsoft needs an Insider Program. No, there's a Halo Insider Program. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's hysterical. I know. Okay. And let's see. Story two on Xbox is that Microsoft and the VA are partnering to buy the Xbox accessibility controller and other Xbox hardware, like other peripherals, the consoles themselves, uh, to veterans uh, at multiple locations throughout the United States. are also going to be at special events. Obviously, there's no downside to this. This is really cool. And uh, that's kind of a neat partnership and an actual partnership. <laughs> I was saying, like a lot of other Microsoft's partnerships. Um, in less good news, uh, Notch, the creator of Minecraft, has turned into <laughs> kind of a, how do I say it? Um, Nut job? Fascist, racist, <laughs> yes. homophobic, wow. yep. whatever, terrible person. Um, ever since Microsoft handed him a check for several billion dollars, he's turned into, uh, you know, the dark pit at the heart of the internet. And so he will not be taking part in Minecraft's 10th anniversary because Microsoft That's is not so inviting sad. him to. That's so weird and sad. I don't mm. know. It is weird and sad, yeah. He he believes in all kinds of crazy conspiracy theories. There's a lot of weird stuff going on there. It's too bad. Um, and I just had to bring up this document because I wanted to make sure I got these features right. You know, Microsoft is always testing new versions of the Xbox system software. There's one coming out uh, this month called 1905 or maybe next month, but it's called 1905. Um, they started testing it with insiders. Um, there's some, it's just basic small features in here. Um, you know, message requests, uh, better sorting in games and apps. Um, finding out actually one cross-platform feature um, because people on Xbox Live increasingly will be playing games on non-Xbox platforms, meaning Windows PCs or mobile devices. Uh, you'll be able to see from your friends list what device they're on. And so if they're on a, an, playing a game on an iPhone, you might not want to invite them to play a game on the Xbox, that kind of thing. So that's heading out, or has already headed out, uh, headed out, I'm sorry, I believe to Insiders, and we'll be heading out to everyone else sometime in the next month or so. And then I guess this is technically also bad news for Microsoft. Um, Sony, in their most recent quarterly earnings, announced that they had sold almost 100 million units of the PlayStation 4. They will surpass that figure sometime, I believe, this quarter, certainly this year. Um, yeah, so that's probably... 
50 to 70 million units more than Xbox, but nobody really knows for sure. Wow. Um, yeah. That's, that's a lot more. Yeah, we do know that. Well, so uh, PlayStation sales have also slowed down, just like they have for the Xbox. Uh, this is the natural life cycle. I think we're entering. Uh, what is this year six? We're in basically. I mean, so they've kind of peaked. Uh, they're selling fewer consoles year over year, just like Microsoft is. The problem is they've sold a ton more than Microsoft has. A um, hundred million units, by the way, is so off the top of my head, is more than most video game systems. I think the one that has outsold it is the PlayStation Two which is probably 150 million-ish uh, units. Um, they will surpass the Wii. They have surpassed the Wii U, the GameCube, the you know PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, um, basically everything else. So it's a big number. Mm. Surprise, surprise. All right, let's, um, let's break here and uh, talk about Paul's absolute favorite program in the whole world. Well, I don't know about <laughs> and then, and then uh, Paul will come back and talk more about gaming with his. Team. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about Call of Duty. Call I see Duty. what you're saying. No, I know what your favorite game is. Yeah, uh, our app pick of the week, our enterprise pick of the week, our code name pick of the week, and yes, our beer pick of the week. I like this name. <laughs> wow. But first, a word from our sponsor, and it actually is a product Paul uh, uses. It's actually yeah, it kind of cool because it's behind the scenes. As you're writing, it's Grammarly. Grammarly is, you know, uh, you can check off the things it is and it isn't. Really, Grammarly is a communication tool. That's the best way to think of it. That'll help you improve your writing. So it's mistake-free, yes, but also, and I, I think just as important, clear and effective. Grammarly helps everyone, even uh, the best students and top professionals and People who, I always thought my grammar was excellent. I rarely make grammatical errors. Of course, when you do, it's really embarrassing, so it's nice not to. Um, but the, everybody gets to use Grammarly to do their best work to accomplish more of what they're trying to do in communication online, whether it's get a job, get an A, uh, or you know make a brilliant blog post. It's available on all platforms, including uh, there's online browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. There's a desktop editor you can use in Windows or Mac. There's a mobile keyboard checker that you can use uh, on your Android or iOS devices. Uh, there's a free product, too, so you can try it with a free product. That's basically spelling and grammar. Here's what you get more with premium. Spelling, grammar, yes, but also advanced punctuation. That's sometimes hard to get the punctuation right. Structure. It's actually such a good engine. It understands style within the context of what you're doing, vocabulary suggestions. It helps you be more concise. It helps you improve readability. In fact, it's a, it's aware of what you're doing, and so the readability is different for, say, a blog post than an academic essay or a, a job resume. It will help you with all of the above. Accomplish your goals. Write and communicate more clearly, more effectively with Grammarly. You could polish your resume to get that new job. It knows about all of that and will help you with all of that. So there is a Grammarly free, but I think you should look at Grammarly Premium, and I can get you 20% off right now if you go to Grammarly.com slash Windows. We'd like to give you some incentive, a special offer of some kind. This is a good one. 20% off G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y, Grammarly.com slash Windows for 20% off your Grammarly Premium account today. Thank you uh, so much for your support, Grammarly. Great tool. We all around, all of us around here use it. I know Paul uses it. And uh, we appreciate your sponsorship. Grammarly.com slash Windows. You show your affection for Paul and Mary Jo by using that special URL. And you'll get 20% off the premium account. Now, for the back of the book, Paul Therott kicks things off mm -hmm. with his tip of the week. I really do love uh, Grammarly, by the way. Yes, I wasn't. Trying to put yeah. words in your mouth. <laughs> oh no, no, I, I know. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to convince you. I was. Just I've seen case. your. You posted about it. You've, you've, yeah, you've yeah. I really. Yeah. I use it every day, and I yeah. love it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of tips related to Xbox, because why not? Uh, Microsoft has revealed the Xbox Game Pass games, and also the games for Gold titles that will coming out in May. And of course, now it's May first, so uh, the the first two game for Gold titles are available now. The first two uh, Xbox Game Pass games are going live. I think it's tomorrow. Let me bring up this list. Yeah, uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow. And th those are two of the big ones for the month, too. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, and Wargroove will be available via Game Pass. Also, 
the list that Microsoft provided really just covers the first half of the month. So uh, as has been the case in uh, previous months, you can expect more announcements. I haven't on, played with Wolfenstein uh, yeah. since the Apple II. When the Slightly Nazis different. went, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. they couldn't. There was no um, speech. So I sh should I download this? Would it be fun to? It's a what it is is a, um, a first person shooter that is very similar to like the Call of Duty type games, ah, except it's kind okay. of a fantasy scenario where the Nazis had won World War II and the world is slightly different. Oh, goodness gracious! <laughs> um, not in a Hunter S. Thompson uh, way, but in kind of a fantasy science fiction -y way, I guess. So is that uh, they're, Game they're Pass or good. Games with good. Gold? I'm looking at Games for Gold. You, is it, is the it, Wolfenstein game is in Game Pass. Oh, it's Game Pass. That's why I'm not seeing it. Yep. Okay, well, I subscribe to Game Pass, so that's... Yeah. That's good. I can try it. Here's the Game Pass stuff. If you don't have a Game Pass, one buck for three months. Wow, well, mm -hmm. that's good. You know, you can try now, it out. They take games off as well as add them, right? Is yeah, there's a lot of promotion of that part of it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I'm a little confused. You know, they if you look at their description, they always say we have over 100 games. You know, they've pretty much always had one, over 100 games. So yeah, games must be coming off. Um, I don't see a lot of talk around that. Like I'm not really sure uh, when that happens or what games have come off, I, except for every once in a while. Yeah, but you really don't hear a lot about that. So. I don't have a problem with it as long as it it's not a happen. game you're deep into. Right, you know, right. level level fifty nine, yep. and they take it off. Wait a minute, right? But I, right. but I, because we're not hearing much about it, they can't. They mustn't be doing that. They probably take off the games nobody plays. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. I would hope. I mean, if uh, I think about this a lot, you know, maybe just going pure Game Pass and just playing whatever there. I think the way I would handle it if I did that would be to play games that just arrived this month. Right. That is when I would start playing yeah, them. Yeah, because you'd yeah. have a year or something. Yeah, whatever the time frame might yeah. be. Yeah. Um, and then for the app pick, aside from Grammarly, which, by the way... Did again, you want to talk excellent. about Games for Gold? Because I, I, I bumped Oh, I just, I just that both went live. I, uh, the Games for Gold games are live as of today, the first two. So remember, every month they give away four uh, free games to Xbox Live Gold subscribers. These and so are the kind of silly little games, it looks like. Yeah, this one didn't strike me as being particularly exciting. I, I would say almost every month I download something... Uh, the first two games that are available, I didn't download. This, and, and it's not the first time ever, but I, it, it's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never going to play this kind of game. No, it's not you. <laughs> it's just, I don't see uh, yeah, Paul Thorat yeah. written on this. Could I, could I, could I Marooners. pick that, the green hat off with a sniper <laughs> rifle? No. Yeah, there you go. Where's the no, grenade? Not, Where's the yeah, rocket gonna, launcher? Yeah, exactly. Can I, is there some kind of a tripwire I could leave <laughs> to catch them up? Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I get a couple of uh, app picks. Uh, we were talking last week about the need for pure text, uh, for plain text, and I was saying how I use Notepad every single day. Uh, not like Mary Jo. Mary Jo uses it to write articles, but I do still use it every day. And one of the primary use cases I have is to just blow formatted text through it, paste it back out, and it's you know kind of does that conversion. Um, a reader named Jeff. I, I apologize, I don't know his last name, but he recommended a, a utility called Pure Text which you can get through the Microsoft Store or on the web. And it sits in your tray. You configure a hotkey, and basically the way it works is when you copy-paste, it will just do it as plain text. Nice. So it, it literally, yeah, it's just like a neat little thing Simple. that kind of sits there. So That's free. So, um, yeah. Here's why, Here's one of the places, like, this is really, really useful uh, for me. Uh, one of the things, I, I can't stand this. I don't know why they have this behavior, but I use Microsoft OneNote a lot. And, of course, Microsoft has moved... OneNote to this new, the modern app, you know, the Windows 10 app, not not the desktop app. So when you paste into OneNote, it doesn't work the way it does in all the other Office apps. So if you paste something into Word or Excel or whatever, uh, it will follow whatever the rules you've established in settings for copying and pasting text from other, you know, uh, applications or whatever. Uh, by default, it will try to bring, I think it tries to bring over the formatting. I almost always want that thing to paste in as plain text. And so, but it comes up with a little a little widget, you can click on it, you can say, no, I want this to be plain text, and then you can, at that moment, say, what, what do you want the default paste to be? That's not the way that OneNote works. So uh, when I paste in things, like for the show notes, for example, you actually have to right-click, choose Paste, and then choose Keep Text Only. It's a really monotonous process, right? But now with this new um, keyboard shortcut, which you can configure, I can just paste in with text. And that's all I ever want when I paste into OneNote. I, I always only want text. So kind of a neat little kind of a neat little utility if you need it. 
Um, the other one, this arrived too late for me. <laughs> I've already moved on past uh, the web interface for Gmail or Inbox back in the day. But the guy who created Inbox at Google has since left the company. And he created for himself and his friends a, um, a plugin for Chrome that makes Gmail look more like Inbox, right? It basically simplifies the UI down. So because Google dropped Inbox, he decided to release it publicly. And if you are using Gmail on the web, and, you, and if you were, especially if you were using Inbox before and find Gmail to be this convoluted disaster, this uh, plugin, which is called Simplify, uh, it doesn't make it look like an inbox clone, but it dramatically simplifies the user interface for Gmail on the web. And it's it's excellent. And I, I, I'm actually not using it. I, I should say I, I did install it. It works in the new edge. Um, I don't use Gmail on the web day to day. But every once in a while, there's some email that comes in from somebody that the mail app doesn't show you the attachment for some reason or... Some URL is completely borked or whatever it is. And I find myself, you know, new tab, gmail.com, find the message, whatever. And then when this thing comes up, because now it looks better, I'm like, actually, this looks really nice. <laughs> like, it's, it is really, really nice. So if, you, uh, if you're missing inbox, definitely check that one out. Thank you, Paul. Now Mary Jo Foley. Time for our enterprise pick of the week. Or, yeah, pick of the week. It's a pick. Yep. It's a pick. <laughs> it wasn't a pick. <laughs> uh, pick of the week is Windows Server 1903. So we've talked a lot on Windows Weekly about Windows 10 1903, but we've almost said nothing about Server 1903. And neither has Microsoft, really. I mean, they've done a bunch of insider builds for Server 1903. The notes for those were super obscure, and I never even could make enough heads or tails out of them to write a blog post about them. But now, finally... There's a blog post from Microsoft on the Windows Server blog. First sneak peek of Windows Server version 1903 semi-annual channel. Um, if you want to find this yourself, do a search on cloudblogs.microsoft.com slash Windows Server, and you can see all the posts about Windows Server. So what's new? What's actually going to come in 1903? It's, I would say, a bunch of incremental things. They said they focused on four core pillars, app platform, the edge computing stuff, edge with a lower KC, e. Windows Admin Center, which is the Project Honolulu graphical user interface stuff, and app compatibility. Um, in the blog post, they talk about each of these areas and some of the specific features that they have added to Server 1903. And the one on this list that surprised me the most is we finally have Windows container support in Kubernetes. I thought that had been there forever, but I guess it was just there in preview. So now it's there in GA form and they've now integrated support with that with 1903. Um, on edge, on the edge computing stuff, they, they're working on making server work better with specific edge scenarios. Admin center, they continue to add all kinds of new features. People love that admin center. If you haven't, if you have never tested that out, you should give it a whirl. And they've done a lot of things to improve server core app compatibility. They've got lists in this blog post also of where you can get things like server core insider builds on containers, nano server container builds, and Windows container builds for insiders. So it's a post worth checking out. And finally, we know a little bit about server 1903 that's going to be released in late May alongside Windows 10 1903. So that's my pick. <clears throat> awesome. Good code name, <laughs> code name here, if you're a this, trigonometer. I know. This is a super interesting code name, and one I had not heard until this week, and now I've heard it twice hmm. this week. Hmm. Uh, code name is Cosine, and Cosine stands for Core OS and Intelligent Edge. Again, <laughs> Edge in this case, <laughs> the lowercase e. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, That's so what is this? Cosine is Windows Core. Windows, you know, we keep talking about Windows Core OS and oh. what's going on. Microsoft's building out Windows Core OS. The team that is building this is known as Cosign hmm. inside of Microsoft. And so we've we've heard through the grapevine that we're not going to hear about Windows Lite at build next week. Windows Lite is Microsoft's Chrome OS competitor um, that is built on top of Windows Core OS. We're not going to hear about it yet, but the fact that we now know the name of this team and we also know HoloLens 2 
uses WCOS as well, makes me think at some point fairly soon, Microsoft is hopefully going to start peeling back the covers on what they're doing with CoreOS. And to me, most interestingly, how they're going to get Win32 apps to run on this, specifically on Windows Lite. The word is through containers and virtualization, but maybe the co-sign team will have more to say about that at some point soon. Excellent. I don't know about you, but I feel we have all earned a frothy beverage, a frosty cold, frothy beverage for our work. Mine <laughs> slushy, as it were. Yes. Yes. For Paul, it's a rosé slushy. <laughs> it's, I'll never get um, over, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my pick for the beverage of the week happens to be a beer, and it happens to be a beer made in Seattle, since we're all going to build oh. um, next week. Something we can There's try. a Seattle brewery called Holy Mountain. And holy whatever, are they good? Um, <laughs> they make a lot of Saison style beers. They also make IPAs and other um, dark style beers as well, but they make excellent Saisons, including my pick, which is called Witch Finder. I love that name. <laughs> um, Witch Finder is a beer that's kind of a mixed beer, it's fermented with Brett which is a wild yeast. And that gives it a slightly sour tang, but also a refreshingly sour tang. So it's a Saison made with Brett. Um, it's only like 5%. You can find it on tap in not just the Holy Mountain Tap Room, which you sh should visit if you have time and you're bored in Seattle, um, but also in other fine tap rooms around the Emerald City. I would recommend any Holy Mountain beer if you're looking for something to drink while you're at Build. What a lovely way to wrap this show up. I love a Saison. They're so good. Yeah, really do. Okay, thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, Paul. When do you leave for uh, for uh, Seattle, for Redmond? Six o'clock in the morning. Mm. Do you really? Tomorrow morning? Yeah. When? My flight's at like six o'clock. Saturday, Sunday? Tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, you're going that early. Wow. I don't want to miss the beginning of the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to. Uh, I'm, you won't. I'm going out to Vancouver to hang out with uh, Richard oh, Campbell. Actually, oh, oh nice. Right. That's right. Yeah, nice. yeah. that's going to be great. Vancouver is such a. It's beautiful It's going to be basically city. pictures of me and Richard and sunsets. And is it Vancouver, nice. Washington, or Vancouver, British Columbia? British Columbia. BC. Oh, I yeah. love BC. Yeah. yeah, I used to do a show there. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Go to the Gaslight District. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not really pretty. been. I've been to, is it Victoria? Is the, well, that's also a the, very pretty town, but mm -hmm. smaller. Yeah, that's pretty, but that's all. Yeah. It's cl it's easy. That's close. I, the, yeah. Richard's place is a little further up the coast, but. Okay. You're going to have a great time. I think so. And then uh, build begins Monday. Is that right? It does. Okay. Yeah. Monday. Yeah, so you must arrive. Do you arrive yeah. Sunday, Mary Jo, or do you come early I to arrive. visit? Uh, I arrive Sunday really late because oh. I have a wedding right before Bill. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is Sriracha make... uh, tying the knot? <laughs> Sriracha is not. And he's oh. getting left home and he's not happy. Ooh, about the state of New York is not. liberal, but it's not that <laughs> liberal. <yet. laughs> I'm marrying my cat. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, you're going to be a little tired on Monday. I am. Uh -oh. Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll do the show and we'll be on the big screen. and yeah. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. The adrenaline will keep you yeah. going. It will. So a uh, reminder, sure. once again, we begin our live stream of Microsoft's Build Keynote at 8.30 in the morning Pacific time on Monday. That's 11.30 Eastern, 15.30 UTC. Uh, shortly thereafter, right about 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, we will uh, convene Windows Weekly a little earlier. But I think Paul and Mary Jo will have lots to talk about. Will you have some guests, do you think? Hopefully. Oh boy. Um, yeah, that's we'll a good see. question. I know. Logistics-wise, we'll see if we can. The timing is tough because get, it's it right is. after. If you the, get Rich Turner yeah. on, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll. Perk oh yeah, up. we should put him on. Yeah, <laughs> we could definitely have Rich. Well, we should have Richard Campbell on. And Campbell for sure. He's yeah. always fun. You know, I'll bring oh, yeah. the Abunda. Of course, I'll be mm -hmm. drinking it here. You won't, but <laughs> there has there, there well there have been promises of whiskey. I oh I you know Rich. I think he's good for it. Oh, he's good for it. Yep. Um. All right. Excellent. Uh, and then um. Uh, so the, the uh, once again, normally we do Windows Weekly. Uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific on Wednesdays. That's uh, right. 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. But uh, this week, tune in a little, a little earlier on Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific. Oh, um, 
you know, Mary Jo, we should mention there is a build blogger bash happening against my wishes on um, yeah. <laughs> Tues Tuesday night. Is it Tuesday night? Yeah. And so there's a big meetup. If you're if you're around build, um, there's is going to be a meetup after all at the Pine Box where we did it last year, mm. seven to nine on Tuesday. Fun. No RSVP. Fun. Yep. We were trying to we were trying to get away from that, but we keep getting pulled back into the blogger bash. Just like the mafia. <laughs> Every time I think I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> they pull me back in. The Pine Box is a yeah. great place, by the way. If you have it, is. Yep. I feel like I. It's maybe it's just my. It's weird, my imagination or something. But I felt like I actually heard the piano and the and the clinking glass. I, mm -hmm. I felt like yeah. I was actually there a moment ago. <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> I think like you're an out of body the experience. Bells. Was that <laughs> well, <laughs> Leo, <laughs> you might want to check with a doctor because I think the Pine <laughs> Box used to be a funeral home. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. Oh it did. <laughs> dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yep. Um, hmm. uh, so that was church bells. Maybe <laughs> that might, well, you might have seen yes. something. Was I, there a light? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me see if I can raise uh, both arms. I, uh, mm -hmm. I live very close to a church, and oh, nice. on the hour we get church bells. It's really pretty. It's very beautiful. Um, Paul Thurot is at Thurot.com, T-H-U-R-O-T-T. -T. T H U R R O T double R double T both of them double good, and uh, his books are at leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com, and uh, they are such celebrities in the Windows world that they will be following Satya Nadella's keynote with commentary, not only on our stage but on Microsoft's <laughs> stage, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. We'll keep we'll keep the it feed is. going as long as you're talking. Nice. Thank you for uh, being here, everybody. Tune in uh, next Monday and then from then after uh, Wednesdays. And uh, you can watch live at twit.tv slash live in either case. You can listen live on your Amazon Echo. Just say Amazon Echo, listen to Twit Live, and it should play the current live stream. So it's a good way if you're out and about or doing something. Uh, you can also join the chat room if you're watching live or listening live because they're doing the same at IRC. Dot twit dot TV. Best thing, my best policy is subscribe. You can download every episode of twit.tv slash WW, but if you subscribe, you won't have to do anything. It'll just appear on your phone or your tablet, and you'll be able to listen whenever you're in the mood. So if you use Pocket Cast or Overcast or Stitcher, Slacker, Google's uh, podcast app or Apple's podcast app, or even that app that everybody else hates called Luminary, we don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Luminary? Doesn't, Luminary. Did you hear about that? Uh, for Ka yeah. in the podcast world? $100 million in venture funding. They launched last Monday. Yeah. And uh, apparently had never talked to any podcasters before adding oh, all wow. their feeds, including our feed. Oh, I did hear that. And yeah. they were proxying the feeds so that you couldn't count the downloads. Uh, and yikes. so a lot of people, including some very big podcasts like the New York Times, The Daily, and yeah. uh, Gimlet Media, and uh, Joe Rogan, all pulled their podcasts <laughs> but when they did that, Luminary replaced the normal album art with, you can't get this, the, the, the publishers of this podcast won't allow us to carry it. So here's some other podcasts you might be interested in. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Wow. And they also stripped out Patreon links and things like that. So it's just a mess. Uh, but rather than mm -hmm. get involved in that, I just said, ah, eh, we're on there, stay on there. Unless they stay where yeah. I am, I yeah. think. Yeah. Don't mess. <laughs> that's I'm not, crazy. I'm not messing with it. Well, it's just one more way to listen. And if, if people want to use that, yeah. that's fine. They're going to be a paid mm. uh, subscription uh, app at some point uh, okay. if they survive this. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. Thank we'll you. See you next time on Thank Windows you. Weekly. Safe travels. Thanks. Thanks.